Hey, what's up YouTube? It is hard to believe it's been about six years since I posted my first video on here. A lot has changed since then, but I am still answering a lot of questions on this coupe on the YouTube channel here. So I figured I would post a video answering a lot of those questions and also addressing some of the criticisms and suggestions that I've gotten over the last six years here. And I hope that this video is informative. It'll be a little bit low key, but I hope it's helpful. All right, first question here. If I had a problem with rats or mice, I never knew about it. I didn't see any evidence of that. And I think maybe in part because I had a pretty high tolerance for the black snakes and they like eating mice and probably rats too. I'm sure that the, the mice and the rats could have both fit through the, the size fencing that I had because actually one of the YouTube users wrote in that uh, he had a skunk get through his fence, the same kind that I had used. It's a, it's a nicer looking black wire, but I guess if I were in a place with a lot of those critters, I would probably have to go with a smaller, with a smaller fencing. But I don't think you could make a chicken coop that would be mouse proof because they can squeeze through anything. If you are building a coop, um, what are the things that you absolutely have to keep in mind? I would say, first off, and this, this might be a little bit obvious, but you need to make sure that the chickens can get out of the weather if they want to. If it's really hot, you want to make sure that there's a place for them, them to get into the shade. And if it's really cold, you want to give them the option of coming inside. Um, sometimes they'll stay out in the middle of the rain, and sometimes they'll stand outside when it's freezing, and you wonder why they're not in the coop, but you at least want to give them the option of that. Uh, you want to make sure that your food is out of the weather as well. So you don't want, um, if your food gets wet, it gets moldy, and you definitely don't want that. Uh, you need some roosts probably about 10 or 12 inches of roost space per chicken. And then uh, they also need nesting boxes to lay their eggs in. And I think I've read that should usually be in a dark place in the coop. If you've got a window, you wanna make sure that the light is not shining right on your nesting boxes when the sun comes up or whatever. And then lastly, you want some good airflow in the, in the coop. You don't want it to be drafty, but you do want it to be ventilated. Because if the air gets really humid in there, especially over the winter time, you gotta worry about frostbite and humid air is a, is a big cause of that. So that would be the last thing I would say that you need need to have. It doesn't need to be a window actually, it could just be wire mesh, but you do need airflow. Yeah, this one here is one of the most common suggestions I got um, to put the gutters, to somehow route the water from, the, from the, the gutters of the coop to fill the water buckets. And I didn't do that for a couple reasons. The first is that I worried that anything that pooped on top of the coop, like a squirrel or a raccoon or possum or um, birds or anything, if anything pooped up there, that water was going to be filling the chicken's water. So I decided to not go that route. And the other thing too, um, you could try to filter that water, but if there's any little particle that gets into the chicken's water and you're using the chicken, the nozzles that I had um, on the bottom of the bucket, then that little particle could keep the, the ball valve open, which would cause the bucket to just keep dripping. And obviously, I wanted to be able to go away on vacation or whatever and not have to worry that the, that the water was dripping out even while the chickens were not drinking. So that's why I didn't go that route. I did end up um, catching all that water, and I used it in the garden then, so it didn't go to waste. But it did not go into the chickens' buckets. The uh, pipe setup that I had in my first video where it went into the, the bucket of water, I actually had to abandon that before the winter because those poultry nozzle things, uh, they, can't, they can't be frozen. So I ended up going with a heated poultry fountain. You can get them down at like a uh, tractor su supply for maybe 25 bucks. And I actually ended up leaving my galvanized water bucket in there. And then occasionally over the winter it would thaw and the chickens could also get from that. So it helped. It helped me from having to go out to the coop quite as often over the winter. Yeah, the short answer for this is that this would be adequate. Three nesting boxes would be enough for six chickens. I read a lot of different numbers on this and no one really seems to agree. A general number is um, three chickens per nesting box. I've seen that a lot. I think I've done two chickens per nesting box in most of my builds. But I've even seen numbers as high as six chickens per nesting box, which seems a little bit high to me, but yeah, that, that would definitely be adequate to have six chickens and three nesting boxes. I actually didn't do a whole lot with burying a barrier 
in the soil because when I was digging for the post for this, I ran into so many rocks and it was like a clay soil. So I knew anything that was going to be digging into the coop was going to have its work cut out for it. And I did put the rocks at the bottom there. I figured that that would lengthen the tunnel that an animal would have to do to get underneath everything. And then the the bottom of the run, I did bury maybe like a, a two by four on the one side and a two by six on the other side to serve as the bottom part of my uh, run structure there. Uh, it was built on a little bit of a hill, so the one side I had to dig in a little bit more. But yeah, I didn't really worry about, about that too much. I figured if an animal started to tunnel, it would probably take more than a day to get there. And um, going out there every day or so, I figured I would probably notice if something had started started to dig. But I didn't, yeah, I didn't do too much in terms of underground barriers. This is definitely the most common question that I've gotten over the years, and that is, how do I clean out the sand that was in, in the run there? Um, the run actually started with grass, but then over the course of a few days, the, the chickens scratched that down just to the clay. And whenever it would rain, it was getting real muddy in there. So I added the sand to the top just to try to help it drain a little bit faster. And also the sand doesn't stick to the chicken's feet quite like the clay mud did. So probably about three times a year, two, two or three times a year, I would get in there and shovel out the sand and add it to my garden as a pretty good fertilizer. And maybe about two years into having this chicken coop, I added an extended run, which um, gave the chickens a little bit more pecking room, um, room, to, room to roam around a little bit more. And also it spread their droppings out more. So... Um, I think once I built the extended run, I don't really recall having to clean out the sand in that main run area anymore. I've never been told this before, but I'm curious to hear what you all think. So you can comment down below, but I, I can't say I hear it. You should definitely clean out your buckets every, I would say over the summer, you're looking at maybe every week or so, because um, <clears throat> you'll find green algae starting to grow on the inside. And I don't really recall over the fall and winter if that was a problem, but certainly over the summer, you definitely want to make sure you're cleaning your buckets out to make sure the chickens have good fresh water. Right when the chickens start laying, you're probably going to get about one egg per chicken per day. And then over the winter, they tend to slow down a little bit. And then also as the chickens get older, they, they, their egg production really drops off. I think that usually happens at about two or three years that they that they really stop laying as much. You can tell based on the thumbs up here, this was definitely a common criticism. Uh, and that was my use of heat and lamp, uh, the LED light in, inside the coop. The LED light is really something that I did not keep up with in the end. And the heat lamps, I would say, I was using a little bit less often um, toward the end there. But certainly if it was getting down to zero at night, I, I still turned it on. I felt like it wasn't just about the chickens surviving out there, but having a decent quality of life too. Unfortunately, there's no plan for this particular coop, but I did make um, another coop, which is on the YouTube channel here, with plans and a supply list and tools needed and pretty um, detailed instructions of how to, how to go about that. But the one that uh, was featured at the beginning of this video, unfortunately, I do not have a plan for. Unfortunately, when I had this coop, I was living on about a half an acre property with neighbors all around me. So um, the chickens will definitely wander off a half an acre into your neighbor's flower beds and gardens and scratching everywhere around, pooping on their sidewalks and all that. So um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to let them out much during the day. But sometimes about 30 minutes before, before the sun went down, I let them out. They, they tended to stick around pretty close, and then they also go back in on their own, so you don't have to chase them back in there. Um, chickens are a lot harder to catch than you'd think they would be. Um, and also, I built the extended run, which gave them additional pecking space, scratching space during the day. But no, I, I pretty rarely had them out in my yard during the day. I think I've read a good rule of thumb for determining how many chickens can go in a coop is you want about two to four square feet of coop space per bird. So if you had a four by four coop, that would be 16 square feet. And if you wanted to give them all four square feet each, then you would be able to have four chickens in there. 
And the other consideration is you, you want a, probably about 10 inches of, of roost space per bird, uh, maybe, maybe 12 inches of roost, roost space per bird. But um, yeah, you don't really want to go, I wouldn't probably go under three square feet per bird, although it's like within that range, because especially if you don't have a lot of space for them to peck around in during the day, um, they're going to be all cooped up, pun intended, and they're going to start pecking each other's feathers out, which is a major pain. Um, that's in the end why I had to build my extended run to try to get them separated a little bit. So yeah, <clears throat> I would probably give three or four square feet of space per bird. My coops are always off the ground because uh, it gives the chickens a place to hang out if it's raining or if it's, or if it's sunny. And it also gives you a place to put the food, keep it out of the snow and the rain, and probably deter some predators at least a little bit to have to go up. Although you saw maybe in the other video the snake didn't have much of a problem going up the ramp. But it um, keeps the weather off the coop a little bit. If you have it all the way at the ground, you got constant splashing. And also if the coop is sitting close to the ground, there's potentially some space under there for things like uh, skunks or rats or... Um, little critters to live underneath your coop and also um, I know someone who's who's chicken squeezed underneath the coop also so yeah having it off the ground I feel like there's a ton of benefits to that and those are a few of them this is a comment that I've seen a lot and honestly it's a little bit of a shame because I feel like uh, after the first coop video was made uh, the one that really took off I think right now it's at about three and a half million views. But after that first video was made, I ended up having issues with the chickens pecking at each other. And then I built the extended run. And I feel like I, I made a couple good upgrades over the years to try to make this a better quality of life for the birds. You see, um, you'll see in a later picture here, I added some shrubs around there to give them a little bit more shade. And then I added some um, ash to the to the run so they could they kind of give themselves baths in ash to clean off any mites or anything like that so yeah I, I feel like the first video and unfortunately the one that most people have seen is the one that um, I don't actually feel like it was a very comfortable place for chickens in hindsight maybe if I had two or three chickens in that space they, they could have entertained themselves but with the number that I had which was I think eight maximum at one point um, yeah, they, they want to be out pecking around. They want to be out finding bugs and digging in leaves and pooping on your neighbor's sidewalks. So if you have space, I would say let them let them roam more. And you do have to worry about predators a little bit. Actually, one of my chickens got attacked by a hawk. At, at one point, my extended run didn't have a roof on it. So the hawk came down and I was inside and I heard the chicken squawking. So I ran outside. The hawk tried to fly away with the chicken. There were feathers everywhere. And to my surprise, the chicken was fine. Nothing ever happened to it. It grew its feathers back and probably was a little scared for the rest of its life then. But yeah, the hawk wasn't able to fly away with it. So don't look at my first coop and say, what a comfortable place for chickens. I think it was a, it was a good place um, for me to be able to clean. But in terms of chicken comfort, you want to definitely make sure you're getting them out more than just having them penned up all day. If you haven't been in a Home Depot or a Lowe's recently, um, you may not know how expensive wood is. Uh, by the time you get the metal roof, and I, I put the T111 siding on there, which I think is like 38 bucks a sheet. And the size coop that I had, it was a 5 by 6 which in hindsight was not a good idea because it meant that I had a lot of wasted lumber because I ended up you know there'd be a lot of two and three three foot piece cutoffs that weren't really usable in the rest of my coop then and I wanted the we used the same stain on our coop that we had on the deck that was fairly pricey also and then even screws a box of screws and galvanized bolts and all that stuff it adds up really fast so I think including all the watering stuff and all the sand and all the Everything all in. I think it was probably close to a thousand bucks. So I think that's it for now. I'm going to sign off here. My voice is pretty shot. I started this video with a cold and now I'm not sounding like Nicolas Cage anymore, I guess. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can post them down below and I will do my best to answer them. We'll see you later.